Hey guys, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about money. That's right, today is the long-awaited second installment of dealing with money questions and just in general trying to help you out. How can you run a more profitable bridal sewing business? So yes, we're going to talk all things money today. It's also June. It is peak bridal season for many of us around the world, and I respect the fact that you don't have time to watch a video, and you guys understand I don't have time to make one, right? So uh, this information, though, is very important for me to get out right now. So this is going to be one of my more podcast-style videos that you can play in the background as you work. So I hope you find this super helpful. I have some details in here that are kind of lifelong truths, um, but there's also some details that are uh, pertaining to our current global situation, the situation of inflation, things like that have, that have been going on financially due to the fallout of, you know, you know. I don't need to say, I don't need to say the word today. But anyways, um, I'm going to talk about some things like that, uh, uh, several really important points to make. And then in the end, I'm finally going to give you the long awaited, much requested money affirmations segment. Now for those of you who are not familiar with, uh, affirmations in general they don't all have to be this woo-woo thing where if you just listen to this over and over it's magically gonna happen in your life I don't believe in that basically the way these affirmations will work is it's for those of you who have reached out to me and have said hey I have a problem with um, the confidence that it takes to price things fairly and um, when I hear you talk about money, it gives me the confidence I need to be fair to myself. And uh, they'll also mention, of course, that that feeling wears off after a while. And so they want to come back for reminders. So that's how the affirmations will work. I'll put a link uh, to the, I'll put the timestamp down in the video description below. Or you can always go back to that and play it over and over if you need to so that you can remind yourself to be fair to yourself. In fact, this whole video will serve that way. Um, again, it's podcast style, so it's just going to be something you can play in the background uh, to give you the confidence you need. So here we go. The first part that I want to talk about is something you've all, we've all heard, okay? Um, the idea of like know your ideal client. And I do touch on this in my previous um, money affirmations video that I did. Uh, so it's very important. I want to go ahead and mention it again um, so that it makes sense where I'm going with this. Instead of saying necessarily like who is your ideal client, a lot of times I'll say who are you working for? Are you working uh, as a hobbyist? Are you working to be the local community superhero? Are you working for pats on the back? Are you working to save the day? Are you working for people that will show up on your porch two days before the wedding and they're sobbing and you're going to stay up all night and miss your niece's birthday party um, so that these people will love you and will talk highly of you? Is that who you're working for? Or... Do you want to be a professional bridal seamster? Are you working for money? Is this a business? The whole difference between a business and a hobby is that you expect to earn something. So a lot of you, the main thing is you need to drill down and figure out who you're working for. Are you working for people who have no money but they have a lot of appreciation and enthusiasm and emotion? Or does your ideal client respect you? They have money to pay for the bill. They want to pay you. They're kind. They're fair. 
That's my ideal client. I painted that picture years ago, and I have no problem with when somebody crosses one of those lines, I have no problem with saying in my mind, and this is what I tell all of my BST besties who come and have a retreat with me, and we go over finances and business plan and all that, and they're having a hard time asking for the money that they need for the job. I tell them, I say in my mind, that's not my client. I don't want them to be my client. And I don't have a problem saying it. So let's go back over those attributes that I'm looking for in an ideal client. I want them to be fair. I want them to be kind or respectful. I want them to have the money to pay their bill and for them to want to pay their bill. If they don't have the money, that's no slight on them. That's fine. We've all had times when we wanted to do something and we didn't have the money. There's hundreds of hobbyists, home sewers out there that will take their job on just for the pat in the back. But you have to make up your mind if you're running a sewing business that pat on the back, those tears, the accolades, the shout out on Facebook, that doesn't pay your rent. So as a business owner, you've got to draw the line, right? The other question is, I like to take the same exact question, but picture it a different way. Who are you working for? Same question, but this time I'm not talking about your client. I'm talking about why do you go to work every day? Why do you need this money? Is it for yourself because you need to earn a living? Is it for your spouse because someday you guys want to be able to retire together and travel? You have this dream. Is it to support your family? Is it to pay for tutoring lessons for your special needs child? to cover medical bills, to help your parents who are on a fixed income, help them out, you know, they need their car fixed, you know, you've got money set aside for it. What are you working for? Who are you working for? Take the picture of that person and set it up in your work area. And when somebody tries to talk you down and they try to get you to be unfair to yourself, Think about that person. Look at that picture. And can you tell them no? Can you tell that loved one, you know what, you're just, you're not going to be able to go to the doctor this month now because I have to make this other stranger happy. Nobody would say that if they would take a minute and think it through. Don't let them put the hoodoo on you. Think it through. So, when you're thinking of this, I want to emphasize if they're on hard times and they can no longer afford the professional charges that are fair that you charge, they can go elsewhere. They do have other options. What you have to be careful of is people who want you, they want your professional services, but they want to cry to you and, and Pretend is what I'm mostly talking about. You know, a lot of times they don't even have a budget problem. A lot of times they do have the money. They just don't want to give it to you. And that's why I say they want to pay you fairly. That's part of my um, attributes for my ideal client. So picture this, okay? I've had it happen. And this is where I learned my lesson. And I want you to learn it early on so you don't get harmed financially. How many times have I had somebody balk at just a low to average quote, okay? Let's say I just say it's going to cost $400. How many times have I had them balk at that? And their reason for balking is, well, we went over budget on the dress and now there's no money left for alterations. I've heard that over and over. That's not my problem. Most of the time when they say that, the bride is standing in a dress that costs two or three thousand dollars or two or three times more than what I paid for my own wedding gown. 
It's not my responsibility to fulfill the stranger's dreams if they're not going to support my business. How many times early on did I fall for a sob story and, you know, write a contract for way less than what I should have? And then only to hear later that the bride has hired the most expensive wedding photographer in the area. And it wasn't about money. It was about priorities. How many times have they talked me down? And then later I find out they're throwing a wedding with 300 guests and an open bar and they're spending thousands of dollars on their alcohol. And I just wasn't a priority. And it's not just about me. It's about who is that picture? Who is that picture in my sewing room of who I'm sewing for? It's about them. So they're taking money, essentially, because I could be working for a client who's happy to pay me, right? They're taking money out of my child's tutoring or lessons or medical bills or uh, vehicle expenses or whatever it is. They're taking that money and they're giving it to their guests in the form of alcohol. Think about it like that and see if you're quite so easy to be the charity place for them. How many times have they talked me down and then when they left, they went and got in a car that costs more than my house? That doesn't feel good. And I want you to remember that. I want you guys to work for a fair amount of money. I would rather have fewer contracts with a good number on that contract than to have hundreds of contracts that are underpriced and I'm working night and day and I'm neglecting my family and I can't pay my bills and my back hurts and my hands hurt and I'm stressed out and I don't have enough sleep, my nerves are shot. What kind of life do you want to live? Who are you working for? All right. You ready for a little more? <laughs> I know you can handle just a little bit more, guys. Again, put this thing on repeat, not just to give me watch time. You know, that's great. I appreciate it. Give me that watch time, but, um, but to change something in yourself. All right. So I just have one more little section and it's much shorter than those other two. And then I'm going to move on to the affirmations. All right, here we go. All right, so this next part, uh, we've been talking about it over on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram, by the way. I'm at Bridal Sewing, and uh, I try to be active in the stories over there. I do have a Facebook page. However, I'm not super active on it. You could go ahead and like uh, the Bridal Sewing Techniques Facebook page if you want just in case uh, if someday I'm ever active on it or whatever, you could get notified. But I really, um, honestly, I don't get Facebook. <laughs> like, it just doesn't work for me. So um, I'll, I'll mostly be on Instagram. And of course, you know, I'm rocking the tube. I'm over here on YouTube. But anyways, uh, so we've been talking about it on Instagram about inflation. Now, a lot of times I can't speak about money things because the BST audience is global and it's so different everywhere, right? Well, this is something that we can all relate to. There is global inflation happening right now. We haven't really felt uh, too grave uh, of an effect from it yet, but it is coming. Um, if it's not already hit you, it's coming. So I want you to keep that in mind that when you write a contract, and this is good to always keep in mind because none of us know what's around the corner. We didn't know the pandemic was coming back in 2019. None of us had any idea what 2020 was going to hold for us. But a contract is you writing down a price for future work. So what you need to keep in mind is you're not pricing this job for what it needs to pay today. You're pricing it for what it needs to pay when you do the work, whether it's, you know, three months from now, six months from now, a year from now. Some of my clients book a whole year out. 
And what I don't want to happen is for you to price a job, uh, let's say it's a $300 job, and today $300 would be fair, um, but it's a year out, and let's say your expenses double uh, between now and next year, and you really need to make $600 on it next year. I don't want to see that happen to you. So uh, in light of the inflation and then just in general always, I do recommend that you give a range on your work order or your contract, whatever it is that you fill out and put your name to with the client. So if a job is 300, I do recommend you tell them they can often move that needle uh, down if they choose um, the lower quality budget choices. And we talk about that a lot on this channel, the tips and tricks um, to do something a little less than the way it was originally intended to be altered. And I think you all understand, um, of course, this channel I could show you only the high quality way of altering, but that's usually the most obvious way because it's just reverse engineering, right? taking it out the way it was sewn, change it, put it back the way it was sewn. And that's usually the most expensive way of altering. But there are cheaper ways, and I've kind of put a lot of emphasis on that in the last little bit because of the economy. Many of my brides are having to choose the lower priced options right now compared to what they used to choose before. And that's fine. I'm happy to help them. But if it's a $300 job, I'd say, well, you could take this shortcut here and there. We could change the hem style or, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, and it could be, you know, as low as 200 We could just do a single bustle instead of, you know, an elaborate bustle, for instance. Um, and the lace could be, you know, a little more, a little more like basting it down on the sides instead of, um, hand stitching and teeny tiny stitches, you know, whatever is important to the bride. So, and basting, I'm using that term lightly. I hope you know what I mean. Uh, more like spacing our stitches out a little bit more, a little bit bigger stitches. They're still not going to show and look terrible, but it's not as delicate and invisible as it could be if we could pour hours into the work. And then the high end of your contract needs to reflect um, you know, inflation, uh, if they choose every little expensive thing they could possibly think of, if you run into problems inside the dress that you couldn't foresee by looking at the outside of the dress, all of those things need to be baked into that price. So I think it's fair for that upper price to probably even reach all the way up to 600 to be almost twice as what you expect them to pay. And a lot of times I'll tell them, uh, if I were to alter this dress today, it would likely be around $300 for the average bride. But you could make some budget choices and we could probably do it as cheap as $200. If everything went wrong or was more complex than we expected or you upgraded everything, you could go as high as $600 on this dress. So that's normally what I say. And then I give them the range on the contract. And that's going to help you for in the future to help your contracts be a little more inflation proof. Um, and also, you know, stuff happens. Sometimes you have brides come in and they have a tight budget. And along the way, um, somebody comes along, a family member decides they want to sponsor their alterations on their dress or whatever. And the next thing you know, their budget has doubled. Um, so there's a lot of reasons why people will end up spending more money than less. I definitely saw that with um, the the whole thing that we, we went through last year. A lot of brides say said, "Well, I lost everything else with my wedding. All I have left is my um, is my dress, and so I'm going to make it everything I want it to be, and put the money into that." And that was fair, you know. So uh, our final segment here: money affirmations. Ready or not, here we come. You are worth it. Your work is worth it. Your loved ones are worth it. Your dreams are worth it. 
you are earning money for your loved ones you are earning money for your dreams you are not asking for anything for free you are working hard your hands are valuable right now your hands could be holding the hands of a child you could be walking through the woods with a niece or a nephew or your child or your spouse you could be holding hands right now with someone that you love more than anything you could be walking through the woods you could use your hands to point at a turtle you could use your hands to pick a flower or a beautiful leaf you could use your hands to touch a loved one but today you are using your hands to work you are using your hands for this client so they need to pay you for the use of your hands so that you can give back to that loved one that is not enjoying the day with you when you go to work you are trading time for money you are trading away time with your loved ones time to watch sunsets time for money and you have a right for that money amount to be fair we only have a certain number of breaths that we get to take in our lifespan as you work every moment that you are working over that gown talking with the client you are giving these precious breaths away that are in your lifespan do not trade those breaths away for something that's so much less than you are worth don't trade it away for something that's less than what your loved ones are worth do not let fake tears talk you out of those breaths that you have a limited number of hold fast to the knowledge that you are worth it and your loved ones are worth it clients tears do not change that their financial emergency does not need to become your financial emergency if they are a selfish client they don't care if you have to put your rent on the credit card they don't care if you can't provide for your child's tutoring this month they don't care because they're being selfish and that's not the client that you want to work for you don't have to work for them you're working for someone who is very special to you you're not working for a stranger your client honors you they value you and they want to pay you if they do not honor you value you or want to pay you they are not your client you don't owe a stranger anything 
just because you own a business, you don't owe them anything. But your family deserves your love and your time. You have to make sure that you make the money you need to make to make these dreams come true. That is how you can go to work every day, but still put your family first. If I'm going to create, I'm going to create what I love, what I want to create. And I'm going to give those things to people who matter to me. I'm going to give to family, to friends, to my church. Whatever organization that I'm passionate about, I'm going to give freely to them. I'm not going to feel like I have to give my time to someone who does not value me. I do not have to give my creativity and my energy to a stranger who does not value me, who does not benefit the finances of my business, and then come home drained and not be able to love my family and take care of my family. You don't need to work late for very little money and then go home and be exhausted so that you can't fix dinner and you've got to get takeout yet again for the third night this week for your family and brush off your child who needs help with homework because your brain is tired from working. You don't need to do that. You can find clients who value you. All you have to do is hold the line. I can love and respect my clients and love my job and love making my clients dreams come true and still make a good, fair living. I'm not against my brides when I'm making a fair living. We're all being treated fairly when I make a fair living. I would rather work for 10 clients who pay me well and treat me well than work for 100 clients who do not pay me fairly and treat me unfairly and do not value my work. Well, there you have it. And what did I mean when I said, I hope I make you cry? I'm just saying, if you've been cheating yourself, I hope I made you cry because I made you feel valued. You have a great day.